Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's first video, doing JMA Friday for today's first video. So as always on a Friday, we're having a detailed look at the weather for the month ahead. And this is going to take us into the early part of October, into the first half of October really. Um, so uh, we'll have a look at the JMA and then we'll have a look at CFSV2. We'll compare the two models and see if we can pick out any particularly evident trends. Uh, coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have your week's 10-day video update, and that will, of course, include all of the regular features. Uh, right then, so we'll start off with the 500 millibar height and number flow charts from the uh, North Pole view down, from the Arctic view down. Uh, so the North Pole of the uh, Northern Hemisphere and Arctic are somewhere around there, and then we've got the mid-latitudes uh, around here. Red is extrapolating, red, uh, yellow, orange and red is extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure, and blue to below average heights, uh, which is low pressure. These are broken down into weekly periods, so the first week period will take us from the 13th through to the 20th of September. So the coming week is dominated by high pressure. We'd better change the colour because we've got these red colours here over top of the country. High pressure is going to be well and truly in charge of the weather in the week ahead. Big, big area of high pressure dominating. Low pressure is pushed up to the north. The jet stream is uh, also pushed up to the north as well, something like that. So um, it's just loads of dry weather coming up in the week ahead and high pressure will be running rampant as we go through to week two which takes us from the 20th to 27th of september a bit of a change beginning to take place here the area of above average heights then is starting to move out into the middle of the atlantic and head up towards the south of greenland low pressure is sort of sinking through scandinavia and uh, that leaves us doing something a little bit like this with the flow and with the jets. So we start to pull that high pressure out into the Atlantic. We begin to get a little bit more influence from the jet stream. It's not particularly unsettled, I have to say. It would still be fairly dry because it's got that wall of high pressure sort of blocking off any rain bearing areas of low pressure in the Atlantic. So it might be a bit showery, but the emphasis will be on drier weather. The main thing will probably be temperatures lowering. As we begin to pull the air in from the North Atlantic, I expect temperatures would start to cool down and uh, we would probably see temperatures beginning to move back towards average there. And then all change for weeks three and four. This takes us from the 27th of September to the 11th of October. And all of a sudden we're going uh, quite unsettled now. We have this area of below average heights and appearing over the top of the UK and Western Europe. High pressure is out in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, also a little bit of high pressure up there. Uh, so we're going on to a cool side of the jet there, if that is right. We've got this ridge down here across the southeast of Europe. That's where the warm air is being pushed into. So uh, we're in about top of low pressure. That is proper autumn, autumnal weather. Autumn gets going there through the early part of October. If that's right, if you're waiting for the final descent into water, that is it. Uh, that will be a cool and unsettled, potentially quite wet start to autumn if that came off. That's a two-week anomaly as well. So for a two-week anomaly, that's quite a strong, uh, quite a strong signal actually. Normally with these weeks three and four anomalies, because um, it can be rather transitional, you tend to get rather weaker uh, signal. But that's a fairly strong signal for a trough there. Uh, as we're going into the end of September, and I would have thought particularly into the beginning of October. Let's confirm all of that with the tropical and mid-latitude view. So the uh, British Isles and Ireland in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. So, reminder of a week one, 500 bit of our height to normally 13th to 20th of September, which is dominated, really, really dominated by high pressure, big, big area, high pressure there, not just over UK, but across many sort of Western and Northern parts of Europe. Uh, so temperature anomaly is a bit above average. It's not all that warm. I suspect we've got uh, warmer days being offset by cooler nights under this ridge of high pressure. Overall, a little bit above average though with the temperature anomaly. And of course, under high pressure, it is going to be dry as well. So the precipitation anomaly is coming out quite significantly drier than average. Then week two, uh, 500 millibar high dolly, which takes us from the 20th to 27th of September. We pull that ridge out 
into the middle of the Atlantic. We can't see Scandinavia. Scandinavia's up there, but there's trough of low pressure through Scandinavia. And that sort of leaves us doing something a bit like that with the flow and with the jet stream. Temperature anomalies uh, have lowered a little bit, but still overall slightly milder than average. So average to slightly above average. Temperature anomalies is beginning to tell a bit more unsettled as well. Precipitation anomalies are starting to go, not necessarily say where, but they're certainly increasing, let's say, as we go through that uh, final full week of September. And then week three and four, taking us from the 27th of September to the 11th of October, does look genuinely unsettled then. A trough of low pressure is in over the top of the country. High pressures pull well away from us into the central part of the North Atlantic. Temperature anomalies hold up close to average. Um, notice very warm over on the eastern side of Europe, so obviously that's where we've got warmer conditions. I suspect actually this could be a little bit cooler than these temperatures are showing. Um, we've got warmth pumping up the eastern, southeastern side of Europe, so I reckon in the northwestern part of Europe we could be looking at something rather cooler there. Uh, and also, of course, by this point, we're at a trough of low pressure, so it's going to be unsettled. Uh, rainfall is coming out above average. So it does look like rather uh, a cool and wet signal as we go into the early part of October with the JMA. Perhaps a bit surprising. I'm sure uh, a lot of you weren't expecting this, but it certainly looks like the JMA is shifting towards proper autumn for early October. Uh, see how CFS V2 compares then. So again, these are 500 mm of our heights broken down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 13th to the 19th of September. And the coming week is dominated by high pressure again, above average heights sitting around many central, northern and western parts of Europe. But below average heights are pushed up to north. The jet stream is uh, going north as well. So um, good agreement between the two models for the weather to be dominated by high pressure in the coming week. Uh, this is week two, it's the 20th to 26th of September. Now, this is a bit different to what the JMA is showing. At this point, the JMA is beginning to pull that high pressure out into the middle of the Atlantic. The CFS just keeps it pretty much centred over the top of the UK. So, no real changes there. Uh, jet stream doing something a bit like that. The trough is through Scandinavia and northeastern parts of Europe. So, that's where... It's autumnal. We're under this big ridge, and that keeps us mainly dry, and you would have thought probably warm as we go into the final full week of September. Remember, Jam at this point is starting to inch that high pressure out into the Atlantic and begin to pull down cooler northwest winds. This is a change as well. This is week three, 27th of September to the 3rd of October, with above average heights then beginning to or setting up close to Germany. Low heights or below average heights to the north of Scandinavia and in the Atlantic a little bit. That could be starting to break down the ridge to some degree, but will still be relatively dry, I would have thought, and probably warm, maybe even very warm there. Could be bringing up wind from a southerly direction, actually. So that could be a really warm start to October, but possibly just going a little bit more unsettled. And then we go through to week four, which is before to the 10th of October, not going as far with the unsettled signal as the JMA is. But overall, it is beginning to move this high pressure over towards the eastern part of Europe. Uh, we've got low pressure out to the northwest of Scotland. So it's more gradual with this change. It's not doing it as quickly. But probably it is actually trending in the same direction, a similar direction, which would, I think, through the early part of October, be to turn things more unsettled, um, just gradually breaking down that ridge. It's not a quick process. It uh, happens quite slowly with the CFS, whereas the JMA is actually quite progressive uh, in doing it quite quick in breaking down the ridge. Uh, these are temperature anomalies from the CFS V2 for the next four weeks. So week one is the 13th to 20th of September. Uh, 13th, 19th of September, I should say. The uh, coming week is actually a little bit cooler than average across the far north of Scotland, close to average for Scotland and Northern Ireland, a little bit warmer than average for England and Wales. Uh, I'm going to go through to week two, and that's uh, a warmer than average week for all of us. It's 20th, 26th of September. At this point, the JMA is beginning to break down the ridge, moving into the middle of the Atlantic, but the CFS keeps the ridge going, and it keeps it much warmer than average as well from the 20th to 26th of September. 
Week three is the 27th of September, the 3rd of October. That one is also above average with temperatures. And week four rounds it all off. Uh, it's the 4th to the 10th of October. And that one also significantly above average, not just UK, but through most parts of Europe as well. So this looks like a warm end September and start to October. Uh, precipitation anomalies, the coming week is largely dry and average through most parts of the country. You're not surprised because we're dominated by high pressure. That goes on into week two as well. That's the 20th, 26th of September. That one also significantly dry than average. Week three will begin to lose a signal, but I suspect it may be starting to turn a little bit more showery. Precipitation is going towards average. Week four actually looks a little bit wetter than average. So... I think we have got a trend here between these two models. Uh, there's a bit of uncertainty, interestingly, for the last week of September. Um, but after that, then they start to come back into line with one another. So what we definitely know is that for the first week, it's dominated by high pressure. The coming week will be very anticyclonic. There'll be loads of dry weather, and it's going to be pretty warm by day. Could be some cooler nights. Now, that last week of September, the JMA wants to not necessarily turn things unsettled but it does want to cool things down a bit and also turn things a little bit showery whereas the CFS just continues this ridge going into the last week of September as well if that came off this would be one of the driest Septembers on record I would have thought for England and Wales anyway probably less so for Scotland and Northern Ireland but for England and Wales this would be an exceptionally dry September if the CFS is right and we just keep this ridge sitting over top of the country right way through towards month's end so it's disagreement there for the last week of September that then we get to October and I think the trend is definitely there although the CFS is slower doing it compared to the JMA but I think for early October the first 10 days of October let's say the trend is definitely there between these two models to break down the high pressure and to turn things unsettled um CFS is holding the temperature up quite well, JMA less so. Uh, it's all very long way off anyway for that sort of detail. I suspect if we did descend into unsettled conditions, we would probably go, probably see the temperature dropping back close to average and uh, rainfall will start to increase. So autumn could be on the way for the start of October, but between now and then, it looks like we've got quite a bit of high pressure to go through for the rest of September. That's how it's looking today. Maybe it's just a snapshot of what these two models are showing. They could all look very, very different next week, so don't take it too seriously. We'll be back later on this afternoon with your week to 10-day video update, so come back for that then. Uh, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.